Do you think it's possible to reduce your overall interview stress and anxiety while also reducing the amount of prep time? Welcome to video four of our 20 part AI feedback Q&A video series. In all these videos, I'm going to be following a very similar format. I'm going to tackle a question based on a specific role at a specific company. We are going to dive in and look a little bit at what the structure of that answer should look like. Then I'm going to provide a good answer. I'm going to run that answer through my AI practiceinterviews.com tool, and then we're going to improve upon that already good answer. Like in all videos, this could be any role at any company. I want you to really look at how I'm structuring the answers and creating that foundation. And the structure and foundation is what's ultimately going to save you time and save you some of that anxiety. Let's dive right in. So today's hypothetical question is, if you were tasked with analyzing a large data set with a little initial direction, how would you approach it and extract meaningful insights? The role as a data scientist, for the purpose of this video, I found a data scientist job description uh, at Meta, specifically at the part of the big part of Meta and Facebook. And this is a data scientist focused in, in product analytics. So like all other videos, I'm just going to scroll through some of the job description right here. So you can pause anytime if you want to really dive in and take a little bit of a deeper look at this job description. For, but for the purpose of these videos, I'm not going to talk through all these data points. I don't think it's really necessary. But again, I want to go slow enough that you could pause it and make sure that you were able to see everything. Then we land on the CFAST method. Again, whenever it comes to these hypothetical answers, CFAST method is a little bit less well known than the STAR method for behavioral answers, but this is the basic overall setup. I'm looking and constantly looking at this model before I'm crafting my answers just to remind myself of all the steps. For the hypothetical answers, they go more in depth than a behavioral answer, so there's a lot to consider along with the time conventions, transition statements, all the steps, and then all the steps here. I'm not going to read through all those steps, but if you want to pause the video again, just to get a good context and feel, this is the model I'll be working off of for all hypothetical answers. So for flow, let's just get back into flow. Let's restate that question. If you were tasked with analyzing a large data set with a little initial direction, how would you approach it to extract meaningful insights? So before diving in, I'd like to ask a few clarifying questions. Is the data set primarily user engagement data or does it include financial and operational data? Are we dealing with petabytes of data or something on a smaller scale? Do I have access to a team for this task or am I working independently? I'd also want to know, is there a specific deadline for extracting these insights? And lastly, has this data set been analyzed before for similar insights? You know, to effectively approach this task, a few items we might want to consider before solving are scale, nature, and context of the data, along with resources and time constraints. Specifically, we're going to dive into and should dive into data quality and overall exploratory analysis. We want to look at statistical methods. Uh, we want to think about machine learning and ultimately be driving towards those success metrics. So before solving, let's make a few assumptions uh, about the role specific context in which we're operating. So I'm going to assume collaboration with product managers, engineering leads, and data engineers is key. Um, from a client perspective, focus might include both individual users and business clients, definitely with varied data usage patterns. From a processes perspective, probably an agile methodology um, is going to be best in project management. The strategies are going to be directed towards enhancing user experience and business-oriented features. For data, I'm going to look at a mix of internal user engagement data and external market trends. And then look at technologies like utilization of advanced analytics tools like Python, SQL, and potentially big data platforms like Hadoop or Spark. 
Okay, I think a good starting point would be discussing data quality and exploratory analysis. Let's dive in. So focusing initially on data quality, it's imperative to ensure the data set's accuracy, completeness, and consistency. Given Meta's vast user base, the data is likely to be large and varied. My first step would involve performing sanity checks, identifying missing values, outliers, and ensuring data integrity. This process could involve using SQL for data querying and Python scripts for more complex data cleansing tasks. Simultaneously, exploratory analysis is crucial. This would involve basic statistical analysis to understand distributions, correlations, and patterns within the data. For instance, understanding user engagement patterns across different platforms of Facebook, Instagram, etc. This step is vital in forming initial hypotheses about user behavior and product interaction. To handle the scale of this data, leveraging technologies like Python's Pandas for data manipulation or SkyPy for statistical analysis would be efficient. Visualizations tools like Matplotlib or Sebian would assist in presenting initial findings, which could reveal unexpected trends or confirm the known behaviors. During this phase, engaging with product managers and data engineers would be key to understanding the nuances of the data and the product's functionality, aligning the analysis with the product's strategic goals. Let's transition and focus on statistical methods and machine learning. Delving into statistical models and machine learning, I would apply more complex analytical techniques to test the hypothesis generated from the exploratory analysis. Statistical methods like regression analysis could help understand the relationships between different variables, such as how changes in the app features might affect user engagement. Leveraging ML, particularly supervised learning techniques, could predict user behaviors or segment users based on interaction patterns. For example, a decision tree model could classify user types based on their engagement levels, which could inform targeted product enhancements. The integration of A-B testing frameworks can also provide insights into how different product changes impact user behavior. For instance, testing a new feature in Instagram and analyzing its impact on user engagement compared to a control group. Collaboration with the Eng team would be crucial here, particularly for implementing these real-time data analytics, which might involve using technologies like Apache, Kafka for streaming data processing. Assumptions about that data, such as it being large-scale and diverse, would guide the choice of ML models and the approach to handling big data, potentially using platforms like Spark for efficient processing. I think let's round out our answer by discussing success metrics. For the final phase, focusing in on success metrics and outcomes is key. It's essential to define to define clear KPIs that align with our product goals. These could include metrics like daily activity users, retention rate, or revenue per user. Monitoring these metrics pre-post implementation of product changes will offer insights into the impact of these changes. Employing a dashboard that visualizes these metrics in real time would allow for continuous monitoring and quick decision making. Tools like Tableau or Power BI could also be used for this purpose. Moreover, conducting a cost benefit analysis of the implemented changes in terms of resource allocation and the value added to the product would be crucial. This involves assessing the technical feasibility of the potential ROI of insights derived from data analysis. In conclusion, this approach ensures that the data analysis is not just academic an academic exercise, but translates into tangible improvements in the product, enhancing user experience and business value. Whew. It's always a deep breath. One of the reasons why these hypothetical answers seem so crazy long when doing them in a video like this is because they're meant in the transition statements to build some space, to build some engagement with the interviewer. But since I'm just speaking to the camera, it can feel really long. But the intent with each transition statement is to bring the interviewer in and break it up a little bit. So let's look at some of that feedback. So we got feedback that the framework was clear and concise. Next time, ensure to include relevant stakeholders. 
understanding of the business objectives related to the data set, choice of tools, and reporting stage in the framework. Yeah, I would say that the framework was a little bit lean and absolutely always thinking about goals and objectives and stakeholders. Items like that and any sort of data are strong considerations for a framework. The assumptions were correct for the role of data scientists, but lack specificity and creativity and future responses provide more specific quantifications and be more creative, assuming complexities such as unstructured data. Okay, so one of the items you might have noticed is we didn't make the assumptions so specific to the role that we were focusing in on something that was really a good visual journey for our interviewer. It was a little bit more generic. And so we were just kind of going through the high level and maybe not attaching it to a specific user base, like just a certain type of Facebook or Instagram user, for example. Creating more specifics creates a visual for the audience and therefore gives them a better experience. And those were really the two big pieces of feedback given. And so again, when we're thinking about our framework, we just want to think about okay, connect the concepts back to the core question. So missing things like the stakeholders was an important item and the goals was also really important. And then it also gave us a little bit of feedback on the assumptions. Remember, speak from the perspective of your role. And we're really going to preface with key people, processes, and technologies. We just want to get those as connected as possible to the company we're interviewing for. So the more we could have segmented the users and focused maybe on a specific use case, probably would have been more effective for our interviewer to visualize our answer. I really hope this helps. I'm really excited to announce that the paid launch of my AIPracticeInterviews.com tool will be out on February 26th. If you go to the YouTube link in the description below, what you can do is you can click on that link and become an early adopter. Two advantages of becoming an early adopter. One, you're guaranteed a discount. We're going to give a discount to everybody who signs up as an early adopter. Secondly, we're letting people onto the platform and beta test the tool for free. Um, you can test it for free. You can give us feedback if you like, but we are absolutely letting people get on there and play around with it for no cost. Thank you so much. I really hope this video helps.